welcome back to Reading with Mr White with me, Mr White, and this, The Nowhere Emporium by Ross McKenzie. We're on to chapter 25 today. Did you watch the last uh, the last episode? We did two chapters, didn't we? The first one, chapter 23, very, very short. So we had a little cheeky chapter 24 and a lot happened in chapter 24. So Daniel heard some screaming in the Emporium. He's gone off. He'd gone into a room and there was like glass shards falling everywhere and he found Anja on the floor with a big glass shard um, stabbed into her arm, I think it was. Daniel, very, very brave. He saved her. He dragged her out, got um, hurt his feet himself. I think he was bleeding. <clears throat> um, Vindictus came along, Vindictus Sharp. Oh, he's a rotten one, isn't he? Um, and saved Anja. Uh, and then a little bit later on, Daniel was feeling really, really tired and Vindictus Sharp kept trying to guilt Daniel saying basically he wanted the book didn't he the book of wonders and he was saying what if you what if all of this ended and you had to leave the emporium and you've kind of left with knowing that you didn't do all you could to save Mr Silver and Daniel through being tired and injured and just not knowing what to do he eventually handed over the book of wonders to Vindictus Sharp I don't know what's going to happen next but I don't think it's going to be good Right, chapter 25 is called The Nothingness, The Nothingness. Get yourself comfy, here we go. <clears throat> Daniel woke with a start. Several of the clocks on the walls displayed the date as well as the time, and they told him that he'd slept through an entire day. It was strange how tiredness has crept over him, just as, he'd give it, just as he'd given the book to Sharp. I wonder if Sharp did that. Daniel's hand touched the empty pocket. He thought of the book. Usually, when he wished to find something in the Emporium, an object or a place, he would simply hold a picture of it in his mind and he would know in an instant where it could be located. But now, when he pictured the Book of Wonders, he could see nothing. There was a blind spot in his vision, like static interference, and it was not being caused by the weakening Emporium. The only explanation was that Sharp was blocking him, purposefully, purposely keeping him at arm's length. And why would he do that? What did he have to hide? Sharp had made everything seem so hopeless, made Daniel think handing over the Book of Wonders was the only option left. But now his head was clear, Daniel was starting to realise the enormity of his mistake. In half a beat, he was through the curtain and right away it was obvious that something had changed. Looking at the decaying great hall of stairways was like visiting some ancient ruin or the site of a disaster. The stairs were worn and broken, Many of the flickering torches had died, casting the corridors in cold shadow and gloom. The air was tinged with the taste of smoke and thick dust, and of something sour and metallic. In the day, Daniel had been asleep. The Emporium's disease had progressed rapidly. Is it me, or has that disease only started when Vindictus Sharp came on the scene? You know, when he turned up at that party and the lights started flickering, and ever since that moment, the whole place just seems to be falling apart. A terrible thought knocked the wind from him. The Nowhere Hotel. Would it still be standing? Were his friends okay? Sprinting through the dark, Daniel found his path blocked time and time again by the debris of collapsed corridors. A wonder called the Shipwreck had burst open, flooding several passages with waist-deep water full of colourful fish. The door to the Nowhere Hotel was, like many of the other wonders, cracked and warped. As soon as Daniel saw saw it, he knew something had happened, something bad had happened inside. The revolving door deposited him in the lobby, which had been so vibrant and grand the last time he'd visited. Now it was silent. Lights flickered on and off and columns of black marble were crumbling. There were fissures on the floor and places where the ceiling had collapsed. Hello, said Daniel, flinching at the sound of his own voice. There was no answer. He did not want to go any further. He was scared, both of the lonely gloom and what might have happened to his friends. But his friends were exactly the reason he had to go on. Ellie lived in this place and it was impossible for her to escape. What if she was trapped somewhere? What if she was hurt? But where? Which room was she? Was hers? Where should, she, where should he begin his search? Caleb's room, he said to himself. What number was it? Oh, what number? What number? What number? 108. It was 108. He ran to the elevator and punched the button, but nothing happened. Oh, of course it's not working, said Daniel to the Emporium. Why make things easy for me? 
He kicked the wall and a chunk of black marble broke off and thudded to his feet. The stairs were narrow and steep, all bare concrete and flickering strip lights, and as Daniel climbed floor after floor, the nowhere creaked and groaned around him. He knew it could all fall apart at any moment, knew that this wonder could disappear from existence as easily as any of the others, but he pushed, fur he pushed through the fear. When he reached the tenth floor, his legs and lungs were burning. Keep going, keep going. Through the door, he took a slow step forward, and another, and then he froze. A metre or two in front of him, where there should have been a floor and walls, should have been the door to Caleb's room, should have been something, anything. There was nothing. The walls came to a jagged stop, like some monster had taken a, a bite, and a, sorry, had bitten the corridor in half. The floor stopped suddenly, a lip of ragged black carpet, and beyond, opening up in every direction, was darkness that went on forever. Daniel stared into the black, saw no wreckage, no light, no sign that anything at all had ever existed. He imagined stepping off the edge, falling into that nothingness, tumbling forever, losing all memory of who he was or how long he'd been there, until he became part of the nothing too, part of the fabric of the darkness. Lost. Was Caleb lost? Anja? Had the nothing swallowed Ellie? He tore, he tore one foot from the floor and stepped back. A deep rumble filled the place, like the breath of a sleeping giant. A small section of floor and wall broke off and spun away into the nothing as the world lurched violently toward forwards, throwing Daniel onto the carpet. He landed with a thud, knocking the wind from his body, and he rolled and skidded and bumped out of control towards an unimaginable fall. He threw out a desperate hand. His fingers found the ragged edge of the black carpet and he clung on and managed to stop himself going all the way over. His lower body was now hanging out over the edge of the abyss. His grip tightened desperately onto the carpet, but the weight of him was beginning to fray the material and he watched in hopeless, in helpless horror as the carpet ripped slowly, slowly and finally snapped. He fell back with a sickening jerk. A hand, huge and warm, wrapped around his wrist and hoisted him high. It was slung over a wide, a wide shoulder and he watched, blinking the sweat from his eyes as the remainder of the floor began breaking and crumbling like dry cake. Who saved him? Am I dead? He thought. The person who was carrying him leapt back just as the floor collapsed completely and for a moment Daniel felt like he was back in the leap of faith, soaring through the sky. Do you remember the leap of faith room? Then they landed and rolled and tumbled and Daniel was flung against something hard and cold. Are you all right? Daniel rubbed his head and face. There was a smear of fresh blood on his hand. Standing over him, looking down with a concerned expression, was Caleb. They were back in the stairwell, but the nothing was spreading. The door to the tenth floor was being swallowed up and the walls of the stairwell were already beginning to crack. Daniel threw his arms around Caleb. Oh, you saved my life, he said. Where is everyone? Is Ellie all right? Let's talk on the move, said Caleb. The further we are from the edge, the better. Daniel noticed Caleb flinch as, the, um, as they descended the stairs. He seemed to be favouring one of his arms, holding it tight to his body. There was something else. Something was missing. Where's Mr Bobo? Daniel had never seen Caleb without his ragged, no-eyed teddy bear. Caleb's lip trembled. trembled. He, he didn't make it, he said in a low, sad voice. You saw, my room is gone. Bobo was inside when it, when, when it was swallowed by the dark. He took a handkerchief from his pocket and blew his nose. <laughs> when he lowered the hanky, a drop of ink trickled from his nostril. He wiped his nose with his hand and stared at the black smear in skin. <clears throat> I suppose I should have expected it eventually, he said with a sad sigh. We're all just characters in Silver's book and we'll fade to nothing without him. Just like the Emporium. Half of us were wiped out when the hotel began to crumble. Most of the survivors are dying of illness. It seems I can now count myself in that category. Anja, said Daniel, did she make it? 
She survived, said Caleb. She's still recovering from her injuries. He smiled and placed a massive hand on Daniel's shoulders. I heard you saved her. Uh, sorry, I heard you saved her. Everyone knows Daniel Holmes and we thank you. We are in, in your debt forever. The way things are going, there won't be time for tomorrow. Never mind forever, said Daniel. Where are the rest of the staff? Silver made a hospital wing years ago, said Caleb, in case anything ever happened to his customers. It has never been used until now. Thankfully, it's still in one piece. For the moment, at least. He let out a wheeze, wiped inky blood from the corner of his mouth. <laughs> he waved away Daniel's concerned looks. There's nothing can be done for the ill. We can only make them as comfortable as possible. And Ellie? asked Daniel. Have you seen her? Caleb shook his head. Her search party was due to be the last back. They haven't returned yet. She's still out there. Daniel leaned against the wall and put his face in his hands. Caleb sighed. She's tough, he said. I'm sure she'll make it back. He paused to wipe his nose again and then went on. There's something I think you should know. Ellie doesn't have a condition. There's no magical disease that stops her from leaving the shop. It's Mr Silver who keeps her here. What? You mean she's his prisoner? He loves her very much, said Caleb, but he says Ellie must stay for her own protection. He will not tell her exactly what she needs protecting from. Ellie thinks he's being selfish. She believes Mr Silver keeps her in the shop because he doesn't want to be alone. So you can see why she's so desperate. Not only is her father missing, but he is the only one who can release her from this place. She's trapped in a crumbling tomb. They reached the lobby, the fire eater and the boy and sorry, they reached the lobby, the fire eater and the boy and stood face to face at the exit. You're not carrying the Book of Wonders, said Caleb, indicating Daniel's empty inside pocket. I can sense it when it's close by. It's the first time I've seen you without it since Silver disappeared. He began to cough wildly and leaned on the wall, wiping away inky blood from his face. <coughs> I have to go, said Daniel, worry swelling in his chest. He didn't care, he didn't dare confess that he'd given the book away. Try to look after the others and yourself. And if you see Ellie, please tell her, I'm so sorry, I, I, I need to help. I'll see you soon. He turned away, wondering if he'd ever see the fire breather again and began to walk the lonely corridors in search of Vindicta Sharp and the Book of Wonders. Oh, that's the end of that chapter. Oh, well, at least Caleb's safe. I like Caleb, do you? Yeah, um, so... Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Where's Ellie? Daniel's really, really worried about her. I hope she turns up soon. What do you think? Let me know in the um, the comments below. The next chapter, we're going back in time again. It's called An Unexpected Visitor, and it's set in Edinburgh, June 1897. I really, really hope we find out what the deal is between Sharp and um, Mr Silver, don't you? Join me next time for chapter 26. See you later. Bye-bye.